Welcome back to the channel where we're continuing work on Project GX470. We're going through all of the typical maintenance items that any 200,000 mile plus GX470 honestly needs. If you're wondering how we got to where we are today, check the link in the description below for the entire playlist that will get you the background on what maintenance items you need to tackle on your GX470. In this video, we're going to be servicing the transmission. That's changing the fluid in its entirety, doing a complete flush and refill, as well as changing the filter strainer screen and removing the oil pan to do that. Before we get started, let's look at the parts we need to do this job. And here are all the supplies we need to do this job. Firstly, the most important part is the transmission fluid. Now I've gone with OEM Toyota ATF-WS. This is what Toyota recommends for this transmission. Now there might be some aftermarket fluids that you could use, but I think that's a false economy. You'll save yourself maybe $40. Um, it's just better to go with the OEM stuff so you know you're getting the right fluid in that transmission. I've got 14 quarts here, which should be enough to properly flush the system. Some people say you need 16. I, I think we'll get some good red color coming out after 14 quarts. Next, we've got the transmission filter strainer. It's a good idea, 240,000 miles like this one has, just to replace this. Here's an O-ring you need to reseal that against the valve body on the transmission. And here is a transmission oil pan gasket, again, an OEM Toyota part. So that's really what you need to properly service a transmission, especially if you don't have any service history and it has very high mileage like this vehicle does. Now, the first step in this job is to raise the front and the rear of the vehicle, put it on jack stands and make sure the frame is level because that's how ultimately you're going to tell that the fluid level is correct in the transmission if the vehicle is level. You want to jack it up front and rear so you have more access to get to the transmission oil pan. All right, now the vehicle is supported front and rear on jack stands and I've got it as level as I can get it. And I know that because I've got this level here. And when you measure it up against the frame, you can see that the air bubbles there in the center. So it's not rocket science, you don't have to get it incredibly perfect, but you just want to make sure one end isn't significantly higher than the other. Another thing to keep in mind is to ensure that you have your air suspension self-leveling system turned off because when you end up turning the vehicle on, you don't want it to jack up the rear end or lower the rear end and suddenly make the fluid level uneven. Now that we're under the vehicle, we can see the transmission pan right here. This is our overflow plug. This is the drain plug. These are all the perimeter bolts that we'll have to remove to remove the pan to get to the filter. But first, I want to crack loose the fill plug, which is over here on the side of the transmission, right back here. But you want to start there because that's one of the two ways to refill this transmission. So you want to make sure you can get into that before you start draining fluid out. This is a 24 millimeter socket. It wasn't very tight at all. It's actually sealed with an O-ring, which is interesting. We'll leave that out so it'll help drain the pan. Now we want to crack loose the overflow plug just to make sure we can get it loosened. This is a five millimeter Allen. And then we will start draining the fluid from the drain plug here. This is a 14 millimeter socket. Now you do want to drain the fluid into a pan or something that you can then measure the fluid that came out because that's about the same amount you want to re-add. See that fluid is pretty dark. But thankfully not absolutely black. Now we start removing all the perimeter bolts. You gotta be careful when you remove them all, there's still a decent amount of fluid left in this pan. You wanna try and control that when you pull it down so it doesn't just spill everywhere and make an absolute mess.
Now we can remove the filter. Now we can install the new filter, make sure you get the new o-ring on there, put a little bit of transmission oil on there just so it slides into place easier. And then you want to tighten these to 84 inch-pounds. All right, now it's time to clean the pan, remove the old gasket, and clean up the magnets. See, the magnets aren't really that bad, which is a very positive sign, especially with this many miles. This one had a bit more gunk on it, but still not too terrible. I'll just shoot this with some compressed air to make sure there's no fragments still there, and then we can fit the new gasket. I'm going to put a little bit of Hylamar, which is a gasket dressing, in a few spots here on the pan just to hold the gasket in place when I'm going to reinstall it. Alright, that is ready to go back in. You want to make sure the sealing surface on the bottom of the transmission is clean and dry before you put that new gasket up there. So I use some brake parts cleaner, just run along the perimeter. And then you torque the pan bolts to 39 inch pounds. Now you want to tighten your drain bolt and just lightly snug the over flow bolt. Now I'm going to measure the fluid that came out of the pan by using an old oil container with clear quart level markations there so I can accurately see how much I need to put back into the transmission. So that is a whole gallon already, four quarts. I wasn't actually expecting that much to come out. I'm gonna dump this and keep measuring. So 
it looks like we have just over five quarts that went in there. It's like 5.3 quarts or so, roughly. So that's what we're going to refill the transmission with. Now, I don't actually know if the transmission was at the correct level anyways, but it doesn't really matter because we're just going to continue flushing until we see red fluid. Then we'll check the level after we're all done. Now that I've topped the transmission back up with five and a half quarts of fluid, which is just a little bit more than I took out, it's time to pull off the lines on the transmission cooler so we can start the flushing routine. All right, so this is a very makeshift system, but you can see I pulled that hose off of the oil cooler and I attached this external hose that runs down here into a graduated bucket or an old oil container, if you will. And you can see I've got it marked for quartz. That's where it's going to be draining off when you turn the car on. I'm gonna drain about two quarts out and then you'll refill two new quarts through the detached hose here and I just got some airline fittings I mean they're cheap at a hardware store I just had some extras laying on around from my air compressor and I was able to fit that in there then got some of that same clear tubing go down here with another air connector fitting going into the transfer pump and then that going into a new quart of transmission fluid so it's somewhat imprecise but you can make it work with just stuff you have laying around or what's available at the local hardware store. So now we just need to turn the car on and let it fill up with two quarts. Now just something to mention, when you do turn the car on to drain out two quarts, while it's draining, you wanna put the gear selector in every gear and then end back up in park before you shut the car off. That's just to get the fluid cycling through all the gears in the transmission. See, we're getting pretty close to two quarts. So I'm gonna run back in and turn it off. All right, so we went a little over two quarts, but you can see how dark that transmission fluid is coming out of there. The hope is this will start turning more red as we go on. Okay, now we'll start pumping in our two new quarts. Fitting isn't perfectly sealed, but it should be sealed enough to get this going. All right, now we'll turn it back on and just keep repeating the cycle until we're out of new quarts of fluid. Now, I don't wanna run myself completely out of new transmission fluid, so I do have half a quart still over there in case we need to add a little bit more when we're measuring the final fluid level. That is almost there. Two more quarts to go. Now it's important to not get lost in your cycling. 
I almost ran it again to drain out two more quarts and I realized, no, that wouldn't be right. I just need to add two more quarts and then that's it. From here on out, it's just measuring the level. Just wanna make sure you keep tabs on how much you've drained versus how much you've put in. I've drained out eight quarts. I've only put in six quarts. So this is the last two to match it up with eight quarts put in. All right, now's when the real fun starts, and that is measuring the level and making it correct. And you do that by measuring the transmission fluid temperature. Typically, you do this through an OBD2 diagnostic tool, but I've tried two on this vehicle, and neither one tells me the transmission temperature. So, luckily, Toyota has designed kind of a DIY workaround for this that uses the dash temperature light and you get that to work by plugging in a clothespin into the OBD2 connector. It's a bit hard to see, but you'll need to bridge the fourth from the left on the top row with the fifth from the left on the bottom row. Lots of ways to bridge that. I just found that a metal paper clip is the easiest to bend into shape. Then you get in the car and turn it on. Notice dashboard starts freaking out like this. That's okay. Then you take your gear shift and you cycle between neutral and drive a few times until you see the AT oil temp light on. You notice it just turned off. And that's because we're waiting for the temperature to get up to the correct temperature. And you know it's at the correct temperature because that light, that AT oil temp light, will turn on solid. Now, if it's already blinking at you right now, that means your transmission fluid temperature is too high to do the check. There's a certain range. It's between 115 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And when this turns solid, that means that it's in that range. So it might take a while, might be in a neighborhood of 10 minutes to actually see that turn on, but it will get there. When that turns on, we'll go underneath the truck and pull that overflow plug and wait for it to drain out until it just slows to a drip. All right, so the light just turned on. So I'm gonna go to the other side of the truck and pull out the overflow plug. And that is what is involved in properly servicing a high mileage GX470 transmission. Now, if you went to pull that overflow plug and nothing really came out, just a couple drops, that means you need to add more transmission fluid until you start seeing a steady stream that then slows to a very slow stream or drip. So that's not uncommon. Usually by the time these things get a transmission fluid service over 200,000 miles, some of that fluid has burned off and you might find that you're a half a quart low so when you go to add more fluid just add half a quart at a time and go and check the overflow plug once again you'll get there eventually so that's all we've got for this video hope it was helpful again if you want to know the parts i used in this video check the link in the description below for a complete parts list to help you go through your gx 470 as always thanks so much for watching and we'll see you all again next time <laughs>